All right, among the many shadows cast over the president's State of the Union address this evening is last week's disturbing event when a Chinese spy balloon traveled across much of the country to a lackluster response from the president over the weekend. And uh, Department of Defense sources said that our airspace was also breached during the Trump administration. Now, Trump administration officials say they received no such briefings, suggesting possible chain of command violations and raising many, many questions. I mean, I've got a lot of questions about this. Joining me now to discuss this and the president's State of the Union address tonight is Congressman Mike Johnson. He serves on the House Judiciary Committee, the House Armed Services Committee. He represents the 4th Congressional District of Louisiana. He's part of the Republican House leadership team. Uh, Congressman Johnson, welcome back to the program. Hey, Tony. Great to be with you, as always. All right. You serve on the House Armed Services Committee. How many balloon briefings did you get? Uh, we got none. And it's interesting that uh, apparently the administration or, or someone knew that this latest uh, Chinese balloon, spy balloon, was floating at least since January 21st, is what we now understand. Now, we saw it and tracked it for seven days uh, before it even came across the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. So as soon as it got into U U.S. territory, we want to know. Why wasn't it taken down then? Why would we allow this to float across the entire continent, hovering above sensitive military installations and other assets? I mean, it's just a very, very dangerous thing. And I, I don't think we can over, overstate the importance of this. Well, one of the things that disturbs me uh, is the statement, a written statement, so it's not like it was misinterpreted by the, mili uh, by the media, a written statement from the Pentagon last Thursday which said in part, quote, instances of this kind of balloon activity have been observed previously over the past several years. Now, the civilian leadership in the Trump administration have been asked, hey, did you guys know about a balloon? Uh, none of them know anything about it. I've talked to several members of Congress. No one's been briefed on this. I'll have to tell you, I'm starting to smell a Millie. Uh, you know, Mark Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who's the one who said if he could pick, he would pick up the phone and call his Chinese counterpart in the event. Don't worry, if anything's going to happen with Trump, I'm going to call you. I mean, this is troubling that the military would not have advised the civilian leadership of this breach of America's borders. It's deeply troubling. If indeed there were balloons during the Trump administration, we know that uh, Mike Pompeo didn't know about it. He was the CIA director and it, it eventually the Secretary of State. We know that Mark Esper didn't know about it, the Secretary of Defense. I mean, um, it, it, apparently it stopped at some military leader at a lower level. Why in the world would the commander in chief not be informed of this? China is recognized to be almost a peer-to-peer -peer adversary with us. They are the, the, the greatest threat to us, except for our national debt. And, and the idea that they would be floating spy balloons anywhere near the country and the commander in chief not be informed of it is, is a pretty outrageous and, and I think a rather frightening prospect. No one in Congress knew about it, not on the Intelligence Committee, the Armed Services Committee, any of the places any of us serve here. And, and we're deeply concerned. So as you said at the outset, Sony, Tony, we have many more questions than we have answers yet, but we are going to get those answers. When are we going to see the first hearing on this? We have at least three committees now probing this already. We, this all j just happened, of course, uh, over the weekend. And so uh, we'll be uh, setting those for hearing, I think, in the next in the coming days. This is not going to take weeks. This will be days because we have to demand these answers. I, I spoke with my former colleague in the House, Greg Gianforte, who's now the governor of Montana, and on, on Saturday. And uh, he told me that he was not even informed that the balloon was hovering above his state until it was a couple of hundred miles across his border into his state. I mean. You have to allow those in charge to know what's going on, well, and it's just great this I happened. Mean, but, but we didn't even know what it was. We didn't know if it was carrying some kind of uh, biohazard, some kind of, uh, you know, release. Uh, you know, it could have been an EMP, and we just let it move across our country. This is reckless. It's reckless, and it's dangerous because, as has been said many times in the last few days, uh, Xi is toying with us. China is testing President Biden. He's testing his resolve. He's trying to determine if he's going to be strong or weak. And I think we all know what he is projecting here. This is a very dangerous time to be projecting weakness on the world stage because, as Reagan used to remind us, we maintain the peace through strength, our strength, but weakness invites aggression. And so we just sent a message to all of our adversaries, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and terrorists and tyrants all around the world right. that our president lacks resolve. I, it's hard to see this any other way. Well, speaking of hot air, what do you expect to hear tonight uh, <laughs> during the State of the Union address? 
<laughs> well played. Uh, we, we expect a lot of that. We expect more spin. We expect uh, deflection. Uh, for all of the self-made crises that President Biden and his administration have have created here. Look, we, we have a catastrophe on every front of public policy, and it is undeniable. These are objective facts that the American people know and, and feel. They're, they're living through the, the policy, the consequences of the policy decisions that this administration and this president have been making for the last two years, and, and it's beyond refute. So we're going to hear happy talk. We're going to hear uh, lots of uh, you know talking points tonight, but it's I, I fear that it's going to bear very small resemblance to the actual facts. And and I'm telling you, my people know, you know, uh, the people that I represent in my district in Louisiana, I think few of them will be watching tonight because they figure, what's the point? It's just more spin. Right. Uh, very quickly, about 30 seconds left. We just had Senator John Cornyn on the program, and he said the Senate Republicans would back up the House Republicans when it came to negotiations over the debt ceiling. Are the Republicans in the House going to put forward a very straight, clear thinking plan? Yes, we're working on that. It'll be very reasonable. We have to make grown-up decisions here. We have a $31.5 trillion federal debt. We cannot continue on this trajectory. So it's time for difficult decisions. Congress cannot kick the road down the, the can down the road any further. And, and we have to take responsibility for this because it's that, that's our that's our duty here. All right, Congressman Mike Johnson, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, my friend.